<coughs> okay, we're going to show that the supremum of minus s is minus the infimum of s. Here s is a non-empty uh, set. Now to help keep the idea straight, it's nice to look at a little picture like this. So the typical thing in s is going to be called x. Therefore, the typical thing in minus s would be minus x. Now if I start with something in s, it's bigger than or equal to the infimum of s. So if I multiply by negative 1, minus the infimum of s is bigger than or equal to minus x. Now this, negative x, is a typical thing in minus s. So what does this say? This says that minus the infimum of s is an upper bound for minus s. Therefore, it is at least as large as the least upper bound, which is called the supremum of minus s. So that establishes this inequality. Now, take something in minus s, namely minus x. So minus x is less than or equal to the supremum of minus s by definition because this is an upper bound, the least upper bound in fact. Now I'll multiply both sides by negative 1 and then we have x is bigger than or equal to minus the supremum of minus s. And now this x here is just a typical thing in s. And so what we have here is that minus the supremum of minus s is a lower bound to s. So that means that the greatest lower bound of s is bigger than or equal to this particular lower bound. And now if I multiply by negative 1 on both sides, that gives me this inequality here. Therefore, minus the infimum of s is bigger than or equal to the supremum of minus s and the supremum of minus s is bigger than or equal to minus the infimum of s and so what does that mean? That means that these two really have to be the same and these inequalities really are equal signs.